Hey GED students, I'm just going to go ahead and do a little mini lesson on multiplying algebraic expressions since I don't have a full length virtual GED class on this yet and a lot of students were complaining that they didn't understand the video we were using. So let's go ahead and make sure that we're making this concept clear since it's so uh, basic of a concept for algebra. Now I used to just totally skip over this and go straight to the concept of distribution, how multiplication passes out. Um, but what I realized is that students were really struggling because of their weaknesses with uh, exponents, basically. So let's take a look. Um, now, I first want to hearken to something that we should remember. We should already know. So I didn't really give you many directions here. But do you remember? The thing I'd like you to remember here is that we can use exponents to simplify repeated multiplication. Exponents are simpler, or considered simpler, than repeated multiplication. And what am I talking about when I say repeated multiplication? I'm talking about when we have the same number multiplying over and over again. So like here, you can see that I have the number 5 uh, multiplying over and over again. This is 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. Now, of course, I could go ahead and multiply this out, you guys. I know I could do that. 5 times 5 is 25, times 5 again is 125, times 5 again, oh my goodness, now we're at 625. See how big I'm getting? I can totally do it. That is a way to simplify this. But I can also simplify it by writing it in what we call exponential form, using exponents. And basically, the way we do that is we take the number that's multiplying, in this case 5, and we write that, we call that the base. And then we write an exponent, right, to tell us the number of times this is multiplying. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times. Another way to talk about 5 multiplying by itself 5 times is to say 5 to the 6th power. And oh my goodness, that's pretty simple. <laughs> And so uh, that is one way to simplify uh, repeated multiplication. And don't let yourself get freaked out when uh, it's letters, right? We can do the same thing. Z times Z times Z times Z, uh, besides being really, really sleepy, could be rewritten as Z to the fourth power. Sorry, I was just thinking I could use a nap. Zzz. Anyway, so z to the fourth power. So this is what I need you to remember in order to be good at multiplying algebraic expressions. I need you to remember we can use exponents to simplify repeated multiplication. All right, so let's write that down. That's one of the three things that you have got to understand in order to be able to do the skills we're going to do today. Okay, so again, I'll just write it one more time, repeated multiplication can be simplified. Also, say, uh, another way of saying repeated multiplication is repeated factors, repeated factors, the same number multiplying uh, repeatedly. So repeated multiplication can be simplified using exponents. Another thing you need to know, and it, these do have like fancy math words that you're supposed to ha know for college, but for the GED, you don't need to know the vocabulary, but you do need to understand the concept. So uh, the next thing you need to understand is that order. So I should actually probably say neither. Neither order nor groupings matter when you're just multiplying. Now, I know order of operation matters and groupings matter uh, in a lot of situations, but when all you're doing is multiplying, uh, it's not going to matter. Um, let me show you what I mean. When I say order doesn't matter, what I'm telling you is if I take 3 times 4, that'll give me 12. But if I flip the order of those numbers and I do 4 times 3, it gives me the same answer. It still gives me 12. Okay, so order doesn't matter when you multiply. That's an important concept. That concept does have a name. It is known as the commutative property. The numbers can commute. They can move around, and I'll still get the same answer. Okay, so I'll just put that down. Again, you don't have to have this word memorized for the GED, but you do have to know what the heck you're talking about when your college professors say it. All righty. <laughs> okay, and then the other thing is that groupings don't matter when you multiply. Like, let's think of 2 times 3 times 5. 
okay? Now, it's not going to matter if you do the 2 times 3 first. 2 times 3 is 6, and then I multiply by 5, I get 30. But you could do it in a different order. Like, say, you could do the 3 times 5 first. 3 times 5 is 15, but then go to multiply it by that 2, and guess what? I still get 30. So order doesn't matter, and groupings don't matter when you're just multiplying. So that groupings don't matter is known as the associative property. It doesn't matter who you associate with, who you group with. So when it's just a bunch of numbers multiplying, you know, the order and the groupings, you can basically multiply in any order you want. You can pick any of the numbers to multiply first or second, and it won't make a difference. So we're going to use that power very shortly. Then the third thing I need you to understand, now this is not a rule, good news. But this is a standard order. So when we are writing these little algebraic expressions we are going to be looking at today, um, they're called monomials, okay? Again, you don't have to have this word memorized for the GED. But when you're writing them, they're like basically just combinations of um, numbers and variables that are multiplying together. Um, there is a standard way to write them. The thing is you write the number first. Mathematicians call that number the coefficient. So if there's a number portion, you're going to write it out front, like for example, um, negative 4. Then after that, you write variables. Actually, let's not put that right there. Let's put that right here. After coefficient comes variables. And what do I mean when I say variables? I mean the letters. You know, like x is a variable, so that would come next. You would write a number first and the x second if we are multiplying. Now, that being said, be really careful because sometimes there's more than one letter. What if I'm multiplying with like x and y and z? Well, you write those variables in alphabetical order. So how would I write negative 4 times x times y times z? I would just write negative 4 x, y, z and just shove them together in that standard order. All right, so those are the three things we need to take away to do these problems. One, repeated multiplication can be simplified using exponents. If we see the same factor, we're going to use some exponents. Two, the grouping don't matter, the order doesn't matter, so we can multiply in any order we want in order to make our lives simpler. And then three, the standard way of writing is to write the numbers first and then the letters second in alphabetical order. All right, let, armed with that knowledge, let's go try some problems. Okay, let's multiply, you guys. Okay, number one, let's just read it first. It does say 3x times 4x. Yes, that's one way to think about it. But remember what 3x means. 3x means 3 times x. So literally here we have 3 times x times 4 times x. I mean, that's what that means. And remember we said groupings don't matter. So those parentheses where they're at doesn't really matter. And order doesn't matter. So I can pick and choose the numbers as I, I would and kind of move them around. And I'm going to use that to my advantage by taking the numbers first. Remember in standard or in sta that standard way we write things, we deal with the numbers first. So let's do it. Let's deal with the number portion. We know what 3 times 4 is. 3 times 4 is 12. Now you might say, well, what about the x's? Well, what about the x's? Well, we just shove letters up real tight to say that they're multiplying. That's all we're going to do. But do remember that really important first rule we said. We said we use exponents to talk about repeated factors. You have a repeated factor. You're multiplying x more than once. There's an x and there's another x. Okay. What you have is you have x multiplying two times or two x's multiplying. In order to write that we use exponents. Two x's multiplying is written as x to the second power. And so your final answer here is 12x squared. And you're done. You can't solve for x. You can't figure out what x is equal to. You can't solve the mystery. This is all you can do. It is as simple as it's going to get. Awesome. Let's keep going. So next one says 3y times 5x. But yeah, another way to think of this is 3 times y times 5 times x. And we know we can multiply in any order we want. So I'll take advantage of that by dealing with just the numbers. 3 times 5 is 15. Now, this time I don't have repeated factors. X and Y, or Y and X, are not the same, so I'm not going to be using exponents. Exponents occur repeats, you guys. All I'm going to be able to do is shove these letters up real tight in, 
on 15's backside. And do remember, please, that we write those letters normally in alphabetical order. So you're not wrong if you write YX. Okay, that's not wrong. Don't get, don't mishear me. It's just a little weird. It's not standard. So I'm going to write it in the standard way, which is in alphabetical order. So I'll write the X first and the Y second. And I'm done. And you, a lot of students right now are just losing it. Kate, oh my gosh, Kate, if I take the test and I write YX, are they going to mark me wrong? And da, 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 da. Okay, so here's the deal. On the test with something like this, it would probably be multiple choice. So you wouldn't be wrong, but you'd have to be able to look at your answer, YX, compare it to the multiple choices and see XY and know that they, they mean the same thing. Okay, so just get that out of your mind. Oh my gosh, will I be wrong? No, but you need to be able to recognize equality equivalent expressions, basically things that mean the same thing. All right, let's go ahead and look at number three. Now, students, some students will freak out with number three. Like, what the heck? Only one of them has a number? Okay, if only one of them has a number, then we only just have one number multiplying. That's okay. Four. <laughs> And then they might also freak out because of these m's, because we haven't seen an m with an exponent before. But again, let's think about what m squared means. m squared means, or another way to think about it, is two m's multiplying. So there I already have two m's multiplying, and now I'm putting in another m. Now I have a total of one, two, three m's multiplying, or m to the third power. Now those of you who've been through a high school class before or even a college class who recognize the name of that rule, oh my gosh, Kate, that's the pr um, product rule. I totally know what to do with that. That's awesome. But even if you don't have the rules memorized, you can write this out to see it. An M and an M and another M, well, that's three Ms. Uh, three Ms multiplying, I should say. So M to the third power. All right, and that is the final answer. That's as simple as that's gonna get. Okay. Um, now let's go ahead and look at number four, which looks scary because the negative numbers, but do remember you can use a calculator. So if you don't know what negative six times three is, you can feel free to pick up your GED calculator and plug it in. But I'll tell you, I know when we're multiplying, one negative sticks around. I'll say that again. When we're multiplying, one negative sticks around. So I get negative 18. And now let's think about our P's, I got a P here and a P there. I have a repeated factor of P. I have P multiplying two times. I have P to the second power. Cool. Uh, let's start moving a little faster, okay? Don't get intimidated by ugly numbers like decimals or even fractions. Pick up your calculator if you need to. Uh, 2.5 times 0 0.25, oh, 2.4, sorry. I think I'm going to get 0 0.6, but I'm feeling a little slow this morning. Let's check it out. And if any of you are amazed at my ninja prowess with multiplying decimals, I didn't multiply decimals. I converted into a fraction. They're much easier to multiply with in my head. Okay, so I get 0 0.6. And then this is j to the third power. What does that mean? That means j times j times j. And then there's another j, another j. So now I have one, two, three, four j's. So j to the fourth power. Another way to write four j's multiplying. Four j's multiplying is j to the fourth power. Glorious. Uh, last one. And again, this one is actually really easy to do in your head. You, most people can take a third of nine, a third of nine. If they realize what a third of nine means, it means like you have nine things. And you're going to break it into three equal groups. Okay, one, two, three. Well, what would a third of nine be? Would, how many is in this group? One, two, three things. A third of nine would be three. Now, even if you don't know how to do this by hand, you can do this in your TI calculator, okay? Uh, or any calculator um, by typing in the fraction one third. And in the TI calculator, you do that with the N over D button and then multiplying by nine. All right, but I promise you get three. And then now let's deal with the letters here. Now this one's a little weird because I have multiple letters. So we write in alphabetical order. So I'm gonna go ahead and gather the R's before the S's. So let's look at the R's. Okay, the factor of R is repeating twice. Basically what I'm saying there is R is multiplying. I have two R's multiplying. So I'm gonna write R, R squared, right? We use exponents for repeated multiplication. And then you might say, well, what about the S? Well, I only have one single solitary S. So I'll just shove one single solitary S on the back side of that 
expression, and there it is. They are multiplying. All right, um, so this is a really simple concept now. We've really gotten to develop this, but unfortunately, this is easier, the problems we've been looking at, than what actually usually appears on the GED. So let's see how it's not that scary even if they look gross, okay? You can handle, don't panic, don't panic. Please, don't panic, we got this, okay? Once again, use your power to multiply in any order you want to just examine the pieces that you need right now. So let's just do our coefficients, our numbers. And again, you can do that in your calculator, but negative eight times negative two is 16. When you're multiplying and dividing, two negatives cancel each other out. Okay, so I get negative 16. Now we will look at our letters in alphabetical order. So it looks like I have some M's, some N's, and some P's. The first one in alphabetical order is my m's. So there's an m squared, that's two m's multiplying. And there's another m. So m squared and another m, I am looking at three m's multiplying, m to the third power. Next variable, let's see, of n and p, n comes next in the alphabet, so I'll write n next. There's only the one n, so I just shove him there to say he's multiplying. And then again, there's only the one P, so I'll just shove them there to say he's multiplying. And there you go. It's done. It's done. Stop freaking out that you have so much to do. That, that's all you can do. And you walk away, you go home, you drink tea. Okay? Okay, next one. Don't get panicked by those fractions. So yeah, I have two-fifths and negative five-sixths that are multiplying. And you can totally do that in your TI calculator, okay? Two-fifths times negative five-sixths. It can do fractions. And if you don't know how, go check out my video on how to do fraction operations in your TI. I have a whole video on it. But uh, I don't, I'm not going to do that one in a calculator because I think it's really easy to do by hand because I see some cancellation. When you're multiplying uh, common factors from the top and the bottom, they're cancel. Um, so my fives are going to cancel out. And then I can even do some cross reducing. Both two and six are divisible by two. And so I can see that's negative one third. Again, if you just got overwhelmed by what I just did, pick up your calculator and do it there. Okay, let's see, I have some letters. I have J's, K's, and L's. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L. Okay, J's first. There's a J, and there's three more J's multiplying for a total of four J's multiplying. Okay, K's next. Oh, so I just see a single solitary K, so I'll just shove a K on there. And then L's last. I have a couple of L's, I have an L squared. I am done. I like the rainbow. Taste the rainbow, you guys. I think I just advertised for Skittles. Okay, about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.